Welcome to Technovation. I'm your host, Peter High. Our broadcast today comes from our most recent Meta Strategy Digital Symposium and features a conversation I had with Chandra Dandapani. Chandra is the Chief Executive Officer of Global Workplace Solutions at CBRE. During her six plus year tenure at the company, Chandra has been the Chief Digital and Technology Officer, Chief Administrative Officer, and most recently, the Chief Transformation Officer. Prior to CBRE, she served as a divisional CIO at Capital One. In this conversation, Chandra discusses how the return to the office is evolving, and as we come out of the pandemic, how companies are thinking about the balance between in-person collaboration and workplace flexibility. She provides advice on how managers can be intentional about bringing employees back to the office and leverage data-driven insights to make right decisions for their companies. Finally, Chandra reflects on her role as CIO and the journey to becoming a CEO and why she believes the CIO role is a great training ground for future CEOs. I hope you enjoy this conversation. With that, I'd like to welcome Chandra Dandapandi. As I mentioned at the outset of the show, a real aspirational journey that she has been on that I, I hope uh, you will find inspiring for those of you who wish to, to walk in her footsteps. We'll find out a little bit about her own insights and recommendations for those who might wish to. But Chandra, great to see you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Great to be with you, Peter. Excellent. Excellent. Well, let's talk a bit about it. Could, could you provide just a brief overview of your role as Chief Executive Officer of Global Workplace Solutions? What does that entail? It sounds like a mouthful, right? So first of all, it's <laughs> one, of, uh, one of three business segments at CBRE that's externally reported. And our 2021 revenue was about $17 billion, And we essentially provide commercial real estate services to Fortune 500 plus companies in over 100 countries. And what that means is uh, operating our clients' buildings reliably and efficiently and increasingly with sustainability in mind. That includes Peter HVAC, mechanical and electrical services. We also design and deliver projects that bring workplaces to life. And my role really is to support and enable our team of over 65,000 professionals around the world to do their best work every day in serving our clients globally. So yeah, hopefully well, I, that's a very quick summary. Yeah, that's a great, a great overview. Thank you for adding that context and, and quite a significant role um, as is certainly noted. I wanted to also ask you, as I mentioned at the outset, Chandra, this has been such a remarkable time where how we do work and where we do work has changed uh, and it continues to evolve. And we continue, all of us, to gather data and insights um, to determine what that future, how it might continue to evolve to make sure that we are maximizing productivity and happiness and and, and the like throughout our uh, professional careers. And as somebody who not only thinks about this for, for her own team, uh, but also thinks about this on behalf of her customers. You, you're in a, a unique position to offer insights as to how you see things evolving. What are some of those insights you're seeing um, at present, if you wouldn't mind sharing? You know, first, uh, Peter, a significant part of our workforce and for many of our clients never actually stop being at their place of work through the pandemic, right, in certain mm -hmm. industries. For us, it will be our technicians, building engineers who work at our client sites. And so um, those are our frontline colleagues. I'm going to focus on, in responding to your question, on those of us who work at the designated offices, right, mm -hmm. like CBRE offices. And um, fundamentally, we have learned and we continue to believe that being in the office together definitely fosters collaboration, idea sharing, productivity, and importantly, social well-being, right, mental health. Um, as human beings, we need to socialize with others, and workplaces offered a lot of that. And we also, at the same time, recognize the need for flexibility after more than two years of remote work. Cigna actually published a research white paper. This was in March of 2020. Some of you may have seen this. That suggested, actually, it's pretty dark. It said that 62% of the American workforce feels lonely. Think about that. And lonely workers are less productive. And lon loneliness could cost the U.S. economy over $406 billion a year. Okay. And so, as I mentioned, uh, as human beings, we all want to feel connected. And when we are all, when we were in the office every day, we could do that, right? It was easier to make those connections. But as we continue to discover, every company is trying to discover what the new normal means for them. What um, we see many of our clients and ourselves focus on is working to reclaim the benefits of that in-person collaboration in the workplace while maintaining the benefits of being more flexible in terms of work arrangements, uh, i.e. we are not being prescriptive at CBRE. Some of our clients are. Many of them are being, you know, um, providing that flexibility such that um, teams can choose when they're going to be in the office, 
who else is going to be in the office, et cetera. And I would love to expand more on that if there is interest. I, I, I would love to have you do so. Um, and, and again, especially, I, I know that you have some personal thoughts about where you you feel most productive and and, and are, are voting with your your feet and your car uh, <laughs> heading into your office uh, to a greater extent, and, and as you have been actually for a great number of months. But talk a bit about uh, the, the further insights. Peel back on you a little bit further, if you would. Sure. Um, so first of all, we are, we are encouraging all our managers and our clients to be intentional about the why. You know, why and when do they want their teams to come into the office, right? For example, if you have a long commute into the office, commute is a huge factor for many of our colleagues around the world, right? How will you make it worth the time? Let's say, you know, fortunately, as you mentioned, Peter, I don't live too far from my office. And so I've been coming into the office pretty much every day since whenever the mandatory, um, you know, don't come in lifted in, uh, I think it was in June 2020 here in Texas. Um but there are colleagues who have long commutes, right? So if you have a long commute, is it worth your time coming into the office? Who else is going to be in the office that same day? And how do we make sure that uh, you mentioned data-driven insights? How do we provide that information on who else is going to be in the office? Have you made white space in your calendar to spend time talking with your colleagues and not just spend the entire day on Zoom or doing heads down work, right? We're starting to think more about workplace experience. And um, uh, this, when I say we, it includes many of our clients. And the word hospitality has become such a part of, you know, how you think about offices. How do you make sure people feel they belong? And how do they interact with their colleagues? Because ultimately, we want our people not just to be productive. That uh, certainly is of interest, right, in the um, commercial world but also healthy and engaged when they are at the office. So we are definitely focused on a data-driven approach, understanding how our employees are using the workplace. We help our clients with that. And ultimately though, the important thing is we want to stay flexible and fluid in our thinking about what this hybrid work means because the new normal, despite what, if anyone tells you they know what's actually gonna happen by end of this year, I'm interested in seeing your poll question answers. Um, I, I don't believe anybody knows. and companies that have experimented with thou shalt come into the office five days a week have is unfortunately had to either walk that back or they've experienced significant attrition or a drop in engagement survey scores. And, you know, that's not healthy for any company. Yeah, very, very good points. Well, as you say, let's look at the poll results. Daryl, if you would mind uh, posting those for us to check out, see how our audience uh, voted uh, relative to that question. How many days per week on average do you anticipate the majority of your team will be working in the office by the end of this year? So it looks like between two two and three uh, are the, the leaders. Interesting that no one at four or five um, and, and some at zero. Uh, very, very interesting indeed. Um, a, a, any any observations here, Chandra, based upon you know what you're seeing? Not surprising at all. We, we do these polls uh, internally and um... Uh, with research with our clients, and it's very consistent. And also, um, I'm not sure if we have audience from outside the United States on this call, but it also varies very much by country. In the US, this seems very much um, similar to what uh, we are seeing. It's two to three days. And um, and of course, in some parts of the world, it varies, uh, you know, where offices are pretty much back to normal. But um, this is definitely, it rings true. Yeah. Why, well, Chandra, I really also want to spend some time talking about your journey. Uh, I know that many people who've joined us today have aspirations to to rise uh, to roles uh, definitively above the chief information officer role. Not that it's uh, it isn't a wonderful destination, given how strategically important that role has become. But as somebody who has, in fact, successfully walked uh, that pathway, I wonder if you can reflect on what were the advantages of your time as a CIO to prepare you for the roles and responsibilities you've expanded to since you had that role? Sure. Uh, Peter, as you know, throughout my past, let's say, 20 plus years, right, I've been fortunate to go back and forth between technology leadership roles and business leadership roles. In both cases, I would say I've benefited from having that different perspective, multidimensional perspective based on the seat I'm in, right? I got my first uh, divisional CIO role at Capital One, actually right after two business stints, one where I led a business for three years and the second I ran operations. And I felt that those two experiences helped me focus on, once I got into the CI role, staying closely aligned with other business leaders, making sure the way I think about investing in technology, right, which is very closely aligned with business strategy, moving fast and building software, deploying uh, software, et cetera, and caring a lot about customer experience. Now, when I um, 
take on a CEO role, I feel like it gives me opportunities to see where we can leverage data, data as a differentiator, data to develop key insights. How can we leverage automation to improve workflows and our user experience, whether it's our client experiences or our employees? And also being in the CIO role, uh, I think we've all learned that you can't do it by yourself. So companies are always looking to figure out what their peers are doing. As a CIO, you've learned to figure out how to build by, my mantra is build by your partner, right? And you have a great bird's eye view of the whole company. You know how many functions, how various functions interoperate. And you also understand the data strengths a company has. So I actually think CIOs are so well positioned to um, get into business leadership roles because of that broad perspective they bring, their ability to collaborate within and outside the ecosystem. And I will tell you, ultimately, CIOs, good CIOs are really good at getting things done. As you know, every business not, not only needs great strategy, but leaders who can get things done. And so I feel in many ways, a CIO role is a tremendous training ground. Of course, I'm biased, but um, I think it's a tremendous training ground to get into a business leadership role. That's a great overview. And in the last couple of minutes, Chandra, I wonder, are there any other recommendations for others who'd wish to walk in your footsteps? Part of it I, uh, certainly is to recognize these tremendous advantages that you've highlighted and seize those opportunities to add unusual value. Anything else you'd reflect on that have been difference makers along the way that you would um, encourage others to enact uh, if they are able to do so? Uh, some of these may seem obvious. Um, I would say, Peter, first adopt an outside in perspective and not just an inside out because when you're in technology you are on always on 24 7 you can get so sucked into what you need to do within technology right always work back from what your customers needs are what are your business priorities and challenges and what role can you play in helping solve those the next thing is i think this is even more important i feel we have to internalize that we are business leaders first who happen to have expertise and experience in technology how that manifests is, let's say you're in a conversation with your peer executive committee members. Don't just speak up when they talk about technology, right? Engage in the conversation because you can add so much more and help the organization benefit from things you can contribute to. And last thing I would say is if you are interested in pursuing a leadership role outside of technology, make that interest known to your direct manager because they typically know your strengths and opportunities well. Every time I've had a role change, it's always been my direct manager who understands my strengths and opportunities and knows my interest, and they will help you. Your direct magic can help you find that next role. Yeah, very interesting. Well, Chandra Dandapani, it's always great to catch up with you. Wonderful to hear about uh, the insights you have from, again, this, this very interesting and meaningful perch, uh, especially uh, insights related to the future of work, but also to, to think a little bit further about uh, the evolving role of, of, of CIOs and other tech and digital leaders and the opportunities that they may have in the future as a result of the, 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 the pathway that you are showing uh, through your career journey. Thank you so much for sharing a bit of that with our audience today. Great to be with you, Peter. Thank you.